Hello everyone, uh, real quick, when I was recording for this video, I didn't realize that my settings were recording from my webcam and not the Yeti microphone. So the entire video sounds like I'm recording from the bottom of a basement closet. Sorry about that. However, I don't have time to re-record everything, so yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we'll be talking about the little mini shorts that I've been putting out lately about Star Trek ships and whatnot. The first one was like a full-sized uh, typical Federation ship with the saucer and the Constitution class type thing going on. And the second one that was put out on Sunday was like a little teaser thing about a potential story that I'm working on. Now, I don't know why I'm actually doing this. This is kind of like a spur of the moment possessed kind of thing. <laughs> it's possessed. I'm possessed. But for for the longest time, I've had stories in my head about, you know, the Star Trek universe or universes that mimic Star Trek in some way. When I say that, I'm talking about the ship classes and the warp drive primarily. So while it's not going to be your, you know, true to canon Star Trek, it's going to be Star Trek inspired. And when I say Star Trek inspired, I'm talking about everything before the Kelvin timeline popped up. Because while I do enjoy some of the of the uh, Kelvin Universe movies, mostly because it's got a lot of comedy stashed in there. A lot of the newer age stuff, like the, let's not talk about STD, Star Trek Discovery, or any of the other other stuff. Although I do like watching Lower Decks. It's it's kind of like akin to a comedy, lighthearted Star Trek thing. Kind of like watching Family Guy, only Star Trek based. Yeah, it's sad that they're making the cartoon canon, so everything that happens in the cartoon is technically canon in the Star Trek Universe. Ah, don't, don't, don't even get me started. It should instead be like a very comical, very lighthearted, non-canon production. But, you know, it's, it's opening a can of worms. I'm not going there. But I like it. Moopsie. But no, for the most part, I'm your very old school kind of Star Trek guy. Before Star Trek sold its soul from Paramount to, I believe it was CBS or something like that. So, somebody sold something, okay? If I remember correctly. But anyway, getting back to the point. I liked the concept of warping space and time in order to create faster than light travel. And if you think about it, if you have the technology to warp space and time, the, the technology necessary to warp space-time opens up a whole slew of possible technologies that you could do. Gravity plating. Gravity itself is mass warping space-time, drawing it towards it. That's why we experience gravity on Earth, because the Earth is so fucking massive that it warps space-time towards it, creating gravity. So if you have the ability to warp space-time, you can build something in the floor to mimic the same type of warping effect to create gravity on the ship. Indeed, if you have the ability to warp space-time, you could technically create anti-gravity by warping space-time in the opposite direction of the planet, canceling the gravity of the planet or moon out by creating an opposing force. Now, I will say that warping space-time would would well, you need to generate a shit ton of power. Obviously, I don't know the mathematical equation to that. How much power there would be? I'm sure someone, some science guru, is going to comment in the comments about how much power is necessary to theoretically warp space-time. But in Star Star Trek antimatter was always the go-to power source. However, I thought antimatter would be like, it's very hard to make and it's very hard to contain. So in my stories that I have in my head for like really old fashioned pre-Kirk kind of Star Trek realm. How would warp drive work without the mythical dilithium crystal matrix and the all powerful go-to antimatter? How would that work? And right now I'm thinking it'd be a combination of fusion power, like a tokamak reactor, and capacitors. Something that could store vast amount of energy and then release it all at once. So in this universe that I'm building in my head, warp technology is rather young. Still advanced but rather young and things like antimatter cores are very rare and expensive to build like there's one ship out there that has an antimatter core where the rest are all fusion drives with a huge capacitor bay and instead of being able to sustain warp drive for days or weeks they do what would be called warp jumps and right now all the 40k warhammer people are going like that's a good one no 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 stop it. point is is that these ships in this story that i'm this universe that i'm building 
most of them have fusion drives. Or not, no, not fusion drives, excuse me, fusion cores, fusion power cores. There are a handful out there that still have the old nuclear cores. They have like huge storage bays of capacitors and it takes hours to charge them up just for a small hour long warp jump, but it's better than nothing. And you have the newer ones that have like a fusion drive where the capacitor bays are a lot smaller and they can charge up faster and sustain warp power longer. And instead of dilithium crystals, the coveted theoretical crystals that somehow naturally are produced in the universe, don't ask me how that all works, you have a type of resonant or frequency crystal that's manufactured. Maybe not as good as the supposedly naturally made one. I don't know how the fuck, like again, the naturally made, I don't know. We have the technology to make diamonds. We don't have to dig them up. Yes, it's more, I don't, I don't you know, you know what I mean? Human beings are capable of incredible things. We, yes, mining and resource gathering is a thing, but for the most part, there's a lot of things that we can create inside of a lab. It's cheaper to mine it if it happens naturally, but we have the ability to build it through physics and chemistry. So dilithium, dilithium, good gracious, hasn't really been discovered yet, but the warp drive can still work using a type of man-made frequency crystal modulator technology or the warp field or whatever. So the better, the better the technology gets, the less power is needed in order to create a warp field. So you can imagine that the older ships that use nuclear drives or nu sorry, nuclear cores, their frequency warp nacelle crystals or whatever aren't very advanced. And so they use a whole lot more power and are not as efficient so it like i said it consumes a whole lot of power and the better the technology the less power is needed the more powerful the core the longer the range and flight time and speed of the warp drive so yeah basically in a nutshell that's what i'm working on that kind of universe that kind of storytelling where they have like one ship that's got antimatter drive it's got some capacitors but they're mostly for emergency reasons but it's your basic typical looking federation ship but for the rest of humanity they're still de dealing with fusion drive don't get me started on the impulse engines. I thought it was a mistake for the Akira Prize to have them, but that's just me. What I'll do is I'll use KSP as a medium to tell the story when it comes to ships, beauty shots, or even building an interior. And then I was thinking about drawing the actual people, the characters. Now this is going to take a little while to do. They're not going to be perfect, obviously, but it'll be enough to where you'll be like, oh, okay, this person's that and that person's this. And then I'm going to whip together a, like a short, or if YouTube allows me, I'll make like maybe a two or three minute video because you know how youtube is if it's below eight minutes it doesn't put it out there for people to see anyway i could talk this talk about this forever but i gotta go so let me know what you think in the comments below i'd love to hear what you have to say it might even give me more creative options when making up this story but yeah thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel if you liked what you saw please leave a like and if you really liked what you saw consider subscribing we also have a membership program if you become a member you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next your name pretty cool check it out but anyway love you all stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye